Topic number two. This is a cool, uh, cool little story that I uh, that I found. Uh, it's uh, it's about this Indian man uh, from India, not not an Indian man living in America. Uh, his name is Ramu Dosapati, and he's a he's an HR executive. Um, and he decided that he is going to uh, he's going to open up a a rice ATM. Obviously, it's not just rice. Uh, but Rice ATM uh, sure does have a nice ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> it's good marketing, that guy. He's doing some good marketing. Uh, but, you know, this guy was is, is making buko bucks for, for being in India. Um, his savings account is, you know, it's 50 lakh rupees, which roughly converts to about $61,000, uh, a sum of money that I have never seen in my lifetime. <laughs> And I probably never will. I, I'll, I'll be honest. And I don't. I don't. That's you know. I don't really even give a shit about seeing sixty one thousand dollars in my bank account. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I'm fine with it. Um, but uh, he was he was shopping, and he noticed the security guard that works at this uh, migrant worker facility. And you know, th- these are these are basically people that will come from the villages to work in the cities, um, and then send money home. Uh, so they're very, th- these are poor people. They're, they're part of this lower caste and they're not particularly taken care of, right? The, the companies and corporations they work for don't particularly take care of them a whole lot. That's, that's just the reality of, of, uh, of what that a- a- in environment and industry is. And yeah, man, even when I was a kid, I used to fucking hate that shit. I used to hate that classism shit in India. It used to bug the fuck out of me. Um, you know, so I never liked it. And so when I see stories like this, this is kind of this is kind of cool. So what this guy, Ramu Dosapati, decided to do was he's, you know, looking at the security guard buying a, a shit ton of chicken. Like, uh, I think he said like twenty five hundred dollars worth of chicken, which is, uh, you know, a, it's a lot of chicken, you guys. Uh I don't know if it's exactly twenty five hundred dollars worth of chicken because that is an enormous amount of chicken. That's like an entire chicken farm, probably. She was buying two thousand rupees worth of chickens. I think what he's what what the article meant to say was it would be like the equivalent of buying, you know. Um, but he asked this lady, he was like, "Well, what are you doing?" She was like, "Well, I'm buying chicken." to feed these migrant workers because they ran out of rations and food. Uh, so I thought this would be a nice treat for them. You know, we'll, we'll make some chicken dishes and, and it'll help feed them for a little while. Uh, and he was like, well, how much you're spending 2000 rupees in chicken? How much money do you make on a monthly basis? You're like 6,000 rupees a month. Uh, which again, sounds like a large amount of money, but it's, but in, in reality, it's not, um, because of the conversion rate. And so this guy basically was like, well, hold on a second. This person makes a significant amount of money less than I do. And this person is spending a third of what they make just to help people in need. Well, maybe I should fucking do that shit too. So he went down to the migrant thing uh, and he talked to some people and was like, what do you guys need? What supplies are you guys looking for? So on and so forth. And he figured out what they needed and basically decided to to like open his own store, right? To to open his own uh rice ATM that is going to give people grains and food and water and things of that sort. Things that they need, essential items is 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 how they put it. Essential items is what they what they get. I think this is super cool. Um now, I want to. I want to. I hope. I, I hope the sound will come through. Let me make sure I have the sound up on this thing. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Sorry, technical issues. Technical issues. I think I got to open it up specifically by the tab if I want to share the audio. Uh, there it is. So. This is a pretty short video of this gentleman here. Um, 
give it a second. Sorry, my computer is all of a sudden having some issues. It seems like it's still streaming, uh, but my computer is definitely lagging quite quite a bit, significantly lagging. Okay, so it looks like we're somewhat in action here. Okay, yes, it does look like we're in action. Sorry about that, folks. That was quite strange. Perhaps it's time to give the computer a little bit of a break uh, after this live stream. I will probably give it a give it the old give it the old shutdown. But I want to play this little video. It's it's not very long. Um, basically, talks about this guy. It's from Business Insider, right? It's the Business Insider covering the story of uh, this guy. I asked her, what is your salary? She said, 6,000 per month. In 6,000 salary, she's contributing 2,000 to poor and needy. Being a HR of a company, I'm drawing one of like salary. I just checked my account. I have only one and a half lakh in balance. So he says only. That's like a lot of money. One and a half lakh. But by seeing the problems and the real issues, so I put on my provident fund. I got five lakhs provident fund. So basically, you got a, a, a more. Once this thing started picking up, you got more I money. We went to flat. So we wanted to uh, contribute that money to get. Like all the people who are suffering because the three bedroom flat is luxury for us, but for them it's a need. It's a money. We are not giving money, just a food. So he spent over sixty-one thousand dollars feeding people in twenty twenty. I would like to thank Business Insider okay. because I am getting calls from all over India. People are calling me and appreciating, and they would like to start in their own states. So that's the whole thing. Uh, where are we going here? Bring me back up. So at the end, he thanked Business Insider because them running the story helped um, helped other people find him. And uh, they were basically like, well, how can we help? How can we do this in our cities, right? It It's interesting that... that and I'm glad this guy's got. I, I I really do think this is a cool idea, and I'm glad that this guy's doing what he's been, what he's doing. But it very much reminds me of what the Panthers did in the '60s, right? The Black Panthers did this in in the '60s, and they got shit on for it. They got attacked. The FBI uh, was 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 running sting operations. They were trying to kill them. They were trying to portray them as domestic terrorists and things of that sort. Um, if if uh, if you're curious, there is a video that I did about it. Uh, that was actually one of the earliest virtual comedy shows that I did was was essentially outlining the entire history of the Black Panthers through through three segments. Uh, and one of the videos was specifically talking about their survival programs, which included feeding children, helping people get medical attention, free ambulance rides, uh, you know, um, uh, sickle cell anemia uh, screenings. They they and they did it without any sort of government assistance, any sort of corporate assistance. Basically, the way they ran it was saying, hey, we're all part of the same neighborhood. We all see the same kids suffering, the same elderly people going through difficulties, paying medical bills and stuff. What if we got together and figured out a way that, you know, you as a as a shopkeep or you as a um, a, 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 a family practitioner can just give these people a checkup, can give these people uh, some some eggs that we can, and they and they all just donated this stuff, right? And and essentially what they did was they proved Medicare for all does in fact work. It proved that if you help pe if you cover people's basic needs, they live a better life, they're far more fulfilled, there's less crime, and the FBI um, attacked them for it. Uh, and, and a lot of them got killed because of that. 
because of the way the FBI ran their coups. And the government was completely fine with it. And, and history sees them as some sort of, you know, a militant, like black militant group when, when realistically what they were, were socialists. And yes, they had to defend themselves, but they weren't defending, they weren't, they weren't taking arms because, you know, la di da to fucking Tuesday. No, they, they took arms because they were literally under threat. Business Insider is helping this man. And part of the reason is because this guy's getting outside money as well as his own money. He put his money up front first. That is that is the important thing here to to, to note is that he put his money up front first, J just like the Panthers. The Panthers also put their money up front first, right? The, 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 the Panthers themselves were the ones going out there and asking people in the community to donate to their survival programs, to take care of these kids and things of that's because the government wasn't doing it. So he, this guy did the same thing. He noticed that the government's not doing it. It's, it's just people taking care of people so he can contribute to that process. And he, as you saw in the little video there, uh, it was like NGOs and some private corporations and things of that sort were giving money. So it, it's, it, the reason why this isn't getting attacked by some sort of intelligence community because what he's doing is is part of the same template that the Panthers used. Is he's getting corporate money. That this became, the reason why Business Insider is covering this is because this became something approved by the elites that this guy's doing. If they looked at this as a threat, they would have taken this guy out. There would have been smear pieces about this guy, rest assured. But because there was a bunch of NGOs, a bunch of uh, charity industrial complex people, and a bunch of corporations that can that can look at his generosity and capitalize on it and use it as a PR move to be like, hey, look, we support this thing. Aren't we nice? Aren't we cool? Aren't we the best? And I know it sounds like I'm taking a pessimistic twist on something optimistic because, I, yeah, I kind of am. But I, but I want to point out what I'm what I'm trying to point out with with all this is this this guy had the will to do something. Now corporations jumped on it because it was beneficial to them, but the Panthers also had the will to do something. In India, it, you know, even though it's sort of an opportunistic thing, that they were still they're, they're still propping this thing up. Like he's he's going to go and help other people figure out how to do this in their cities. Right? How great is that? That's awesome. The Panthers did the same thing. They had a survival playbook of how to go to different uh, communities and set up your own breakfast for kids program, your own Medicare for all program, your own free hospital rides program. And they were succeeding. And that's when America looks at generosity and communalism as a threat. Not even corporations would back that kind of shit. Even if it meant, even if it meant that it would, it would be a, um, it would be a positive PR image for them. They still didn't. They still won't back it up. We look at stories like this, and 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 we go, "Wow, isn't that nice?" And it makes us feel good on the inside, and it does. Of course, it does, and you should feel good because this is nice. But it's, but it's, it's nice because that's not the norm in the world. The norm in the world is not. Somebody saying, I have an extraordinary amount of money, and what I wanted to do with that money is spend it on a, a luxury three-bedroom apartment. But instead of that, I'm taking that money, staying in my modest two-bedroom space, and using that to help other people. That's not the norm in our society. The norm is to go after that luxury three-bedroom because that means that you're in a higher status. That means that you're doing pretty good. That means that you're you've you've worked hard and you're a good person. And and you know, people that can't afford to get themselves a luxury three bedroom apartment are not good people. They're not hard workers. That's the norm in our society. What should be the norm is what the Panthers did with their survival programs. You should look at a, a, a people in need, you should look at a society in need, and we should be able to help them out. We should have I mean, America was dumping milk during this pandemic and throwing away fruits and vegetables because it's the cheaper thing to do, quote unquote, cheaper thing to do. 
That's insane. We have people around the block for fucking food. Record unemployment. People are about to lose their homes. And private industries and the government has the fucking balls to be like, let's dump the food. Because in the end run, it's cheaper to just pay the farmers to keep making the food and then just dump it all. No, fucking donate it. Make it a tax-deductible donation or some shit to food pantries or or have this is something that we did in, in the community that I'm living in now in Millvale is is every, every every week we got a produce box from from this farm that just had too much produce and they were like we can't deliver to restaurants we can't deliver to grocery stores like we used to so we're going to give it to the community and if there are people in need they get milk cheese meats and vegetables and fruits great why wasn't that done fucking everywhere? It should have been done in every single fucking community across America. That should be the norm, but it's not. It's the, the norm is let's dump it because it's better for the bottom line. So I commend this guy, and I hope this guy succeeds. I hope more people figure out how to use their money to help poor people, and I hope that there's some in, in some way, shape, or form uh really really takes a hammer to the outdated and inhumane class system that exists in India and and the in, you know the inhumane class system that exists in America too it's it's not like America's free of that class system either thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this content uh please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot -H -H com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.